the living goddess of Nepal. It's not allowed to target, take her picture, so I'm taking a picture of her picture. Actually, uh, it's not completely true. It's not allowed to take her picture inside her little palace only when she is somewhere outside. But if she gets out of the palace, her little palace, she's of course fair game, you can take her pictures. But the problem is she is rarely, rarely outside, only if she participates in some religious festi festival and there is not many of them. This is inside Kumari Gar, where the living goddess of Kathmandu lives and appears several times a day, but it's strictly prohibited to take her pictures. And she is actually a royal Kumari, living goddess, uh, the royal one, the highest in Nepal. And she is uh, not very well known outside of Nepal, but it's very revered in Nepal. In the past, kings and in present, prime ministers and politicians come for her um, I probably shouldn't say blessing, but seeking her um, influence on their life. No entrance for foreigners. Taking photographs of Kumari is strictly prohibited. No TikTok. Kumari, which literally translates to virgin, is a uh, girl that's picked up about the age of three or so and stays usually until shortly before she gets her first period then she is replaced with a new one and in 2017 there was a new Kumari three years old and I just learned from a guy here that she was replaced during pandemic and the reason was that she fell and broke her skin and was bleeding and uh, that's not acceptable. They always carry her in some, I don't know, chariot or whatever the proper word is, some contraption, because she's a goddess, cannot touch the ground. And this is Kumari teacher. Because she gets education nowadays until about 10, 20 years ago. The girls got no education and there was a huge outcry against that because the girl gets out at, what, 13 years old and cannot read, write, has no education whatsoever. So nowadays all the Kumaris, retired Kumaris will get some small pension like uh, a hundred dollars a month for the rest of their lives, which is not much, but at least something, and they get education, so when they come back to the civil life, they can go to school and uh, pursue whatever uh, they can. Beautiful wood carvings here. A really intricate work. And the doors everywhere are just so small. Also, um, there is a, I don't know how to call it, traditional legend or something like that that says if Kumari gets married, her husband will die in a year. I mean, a retired Kumari, obviously. But some of them did get married and the husband didn't die, so make your own conclusion. Kumari goddess is the human symbol of power and protection. She is the soul embodiment of pureness among Hindu and Buddhist followers. If the goddess is crying or laughs loudly, it means serious illness or death for you. If 
she is rubbing her eyes, it means your imminent death. If she is trembling, it means you go to prison. If she is picking at food offerings, it means you will suffer financial losses. So nothing like that happened to me today, so I hope I will be okay. A recent discussion and pressure from human rights and children rights activists of Nepal on the Kumari system have somewhat changed the strict governing of Kumaris of Kathmandu. Nowadays, Kumari in the Kumari house is provided with a personal tutor and education. There is even internet books and magazines and they attend or participate in national school exams inside the palace under supervision. So, this is a step towards a better future of Kumari goddess after they lose the title of living goddess. So, I'm sitting at this stupa or temple and it's a good point to view part of the Dober Square and I'm still in front of Kumarigar, the palace of a living goddess, a royal living goddess. She is, the Kumari is the only living goddess worshipped by both Hindus and Buddhists. I've heard that nowadays her family visits her once a week. The Prime Minister and President touch the feet of Kumari and seek her blessing. The Kumari is carried for visiting outside the palace. And her glimpse, Kumari glimpse, is believed to bring good fortune. So I saw her twice today, so I hope I will have good fortune. How do they select Kumari? Well, the process to find a living goddess is quite vast and has many criteria. Five senior Buddhist uh, priests and royal astrologer oversee the selection ritual of Kumari. Some basic characteristics search in children are sound health, no evidence of scars and marks on the body. And once a girl passes through the basic requirements of Kumari Jabez, she is then further examined for 32 body perfections to decide the future Kumari. Some of the characteristics are body like a banyan tree, eyelashes like cow, chest like a lion, voice soft and clear, the same horoscope as the king and since for about last 15 years um, the kingdom of Nepal was abolished, the horoscope must be similar or the same like the Prime Minister's, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, altogether it's like 32 different criteria that she must meet. The children or candidates also cannot be scared of blood and masked men. Every candidate is shown several sacrificed buffalo and masked men dancing on top of the blood. If a child shows signs of fear, she is deemed not worthy of goddess. And this is one of the religious festivals during which the living goddess is carried out of Kumarigar, her house on the right. And she is put on top of the chariot that you see in the middle of the screen and she is carried around. She cannot touch the ground. And on the left, that wild building, its political elite standing there, government officials seeking the blessing of the God. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you for watching and goodbye.